I remember getting my very first interview in my undergrad when I was studying nuclear engineering. I honestly felt like Charlie in the chocolate factory getting that golden ticket and the chance to get into that chocolate factory. For me, it was the nuclear power plant. But in this video, I wanna give you tips on resources and to let you know how to start applying for internships in the nuclear industry and just how difficult it is to get a co-op or an internship, preparing for an actual interview, practicing for that interview, and lastly, behavioral and technical tips for giving interviews when you get your co-op or internship opportunity. During my undergrad, I had the opportunity to do two years on co-ops and internships, work with three different companies, which were utilities and vendors. If you're new to my channel, my name is Osama Big. On this channel, I help demystify nuclear technologies and simplify them. I also provide educational resources like this one that are interested in pursuing a career in the nuclear energy industry. All right, so let's jump right into recognizing the opportunity. Before we jump right into this video, I wanna tell you not to be intimidated or scared. Interviews are not scary. They're simply a communication between yourself and the hiring manager where you have to show your competence, your personality, and also showcase your experiences. You may not have any experience, so don't worry. If you're wondering, it is tough to land an interview, especially when you have zero experiences. But what you can work on is what's under your control. Have a solid resume, cover letter, and a reasonable GPA. And you pretty much have to get all those stars aligned alongside an application which somehow goes through HR and reaches a hiring manager. Yes, it is pretty challenging to get your first one, but I promise you your opportunities that come afterward a lot easier. Just like any other industry, the nuclear energy industry is very competitive. And the first tip is to be very grateful for this opportunity and start preparing. So the second point is to actually start doing research for the interview. So when it comes to interviews, it's really based on the job description, okay? And many a times when you're applying online to different, different jobs or co-op placements, you may not fully remember what the job description was. And by the time you're researching for that interview, that job posting is off. It's no longer available. So what I recommend is to do things that are a lot more proactive rather than reactive. Start by developing a folder system on your computer. I have one where I have a folder which has other subfolders with all of the positions that I've ever applied for, okay? This is a historical archive of how my resumes have evolved over time. Remember, your resume isn't just one document. It's a living document. It's always being refined. It's always being edited. It's always being improved over time. So what you do is, what's a quick fix to this is take a quick screenshot and include that job posting inside your folder. So when you do get an interview opportunity, you have that reference on hand. So second of all, you take that posting, you find out what are the overlaps that I have? What experiences do I have personally, which overlap with the requirements in this posting? Also, if there are some technical things that you may not understand, start reaching out to your professors, your TAs, your contacts within the industry. Remember, in order to prepare for this interview, you need to understand the technical foundations of what you're applying for. Okay, what I love to do when conducting this research is really take detailed notes it's about potential questions that an interviewer could ask. And this is great because it helps me prepare. It helps me, you know, prepare one or two pages uh, full of these notes. All right, so these two pages of notes can really become my practicing notes, which I try practicing with someone that's a friend or an industry colleague or someone that I study with. Also, another really important point is if you know who your hiring manager is, LinkedIn is a great way and an amazing resource to actually go quickly on LinkedIn, see who this hiring manager is, start to gauge what their experiences are and understand that, you know, for example, when I'm answering questions, I can somehow frame questions relevant to that person's experiences. I can try to draw my experiences that relate to that person's background and somehow develop that connection. So remember, LinkedIn is a great resource. It's free, it's available online, and you've got information on the tips of your fingers. You'll also start to understand what type of experiences you might need for that role. So that's the second tip for you is research and information gathering for those interviews. The next topic that I want to cover is interview practice tips. Now, there's a very common misconception that I had when I started my undergrad was that interviews don't need practice. No, interviews are require a lot and a lot of upfront practice. Remember, you only have that one hour or 30 minutes to make a good impression, okay? And in that small amount of time, you may be doing a technical interview, behavioral interview, or a combination of both. So you need to practice for this golden opportunity. Remember, there are other candidates that are also shortlisted for this position. They're equally as qualified. They probably have a really good GPA, amazing experience, experiences and remember this opportunity. You need to practice for this interview. So what I like to do is take your research notes, take the things that you've done a lot of research on and start practicing questions alone. Okay. So what I do is, you know, really depends on your personality and how you really practice
practice for interviews, but I feel as though there's two philosophies. One is to practice alone and imagine the interviewer in front of you, okay? So once you start asking questions and start answering them, it helps you develop that confidence. The second one is to take those same notes, get a friend to ask you those same questions and organically be on your toes. Remember, you won't have these notes in front of you once you're giving interview, okay? You're gonna need to quickly think on your feet and you need to develop that confidence. You need to develop that muscle memory, okay? That right away, you're gonna answer that question. And once a surprise question comes up, so remember, there are gonna be surprises. You're not necessarily gonna be on script. You need to be on your toes. You need to be able to leverage and really draw from examples that you may have in the past. And there are some, you know, genuinely straightforward questions that always come up in interviews. You know, what are your greatest weakness? Okay, that's one question that always pops up. You should have a few different answers in place for that specific question because it just always shows up in interviews, right? So really start getting prepared for the interview practice, okay? And remember the star technique, right? Situation, task, action, and response, right? So remember, use specific examples. Don't do an overview of different things. Use very, very specific examples when it comes to what position you were in at that time and what actions you took and what was the response that you got. So there you have it. Number three is interview practice. The last tip I have for you is behavioral interview tips. And the reason why I'm not giving technical interview tips is because honestly, the technical tips can differ from interview to interview. But overall for technical, you need to start looking back at your lecture notes. You need to start revising things. You need to start doing your own research as to what may be asked during this interview. You know, what were some things that I can do that are available on the public domain? What are some things that I can ask my colleagues and coworkers about, which may not be easily accessible information? So in regards to behavioral interviews, what's, you know, these are very important in regards to the nuclear industry. And many a times they are overlooked. So behavioral interviews can either be taken by HR. You know, I've seen positions where HR takes those interviews, but I've also seen positions where the hiring manager may also take uh, both the technical and the behavioral interview. Remember, engineers may do very well in the technical side, but they may forget about the behavioral side. So what are people looking for? What are interviewers looking for in the behavioral interview? Well, they're looking if you're a strong communicator, right? If you're a strong communicator, you're easier to work with. You can understand different tasks. You can relay information very easily. Conflict resolution, you're easily able to resolve conflicts. You could also react to criticism very positively. That's another really important part. And also how you can really adapt to the company culture, right? So you want someone who is a team player, that's someone that can really adapt to a company culture. So in all of these points, behavior is a very, very important part. So like I said, practicing for an interview is pretty straightforward, but when it comes to behavioral interviews, it's difficult to practice them. Uh, the reason why it's difficult to practice for behavioral interviews is because you can't necessarily be reactive when it comes to behavior. It has to be a proactive measure. What I recommend is for behavior interviews, be proactive, be part of extracurriculars, invest that time in volunteering in your undergrad. The reason why is because a lot of engineers, what they end up doing is they end up burning themselves out, you know, constantly studying, which is very important to maintain your high GPA, but they don't necessarily diversify their skill sets. They don't necessarily go out into their school community and be proactive, proactively part of those different clubs and societies and extracurriculars. So at the end of the day, when it comes down to giving a behavioral interview, they don't have those interpersonal skills, which allow them to really be transparent with their personality, which allows them to resonate with the interview, which allows them to connect with whoever's taking their interview. So what I would recommend for any individual is be proactive, be part of extracurriculars and clubs and societies, not only for that job opportunity and behavioral development, but also for your own self-development. Remember, I think an engineer who is very, very intellectually smart is probably not as superior as compared to an engineer who is well-balanced and also has a different variety of skill sets that they can draw upon. So remember, I think be proactive, get out of your comfort zone, right? And be part of the extracurricular societies, right? I was part of the engineering society. I was part of North American Young Generation Nuclear. I was also part of Engineers Without Borders, Physics Society. I was part of a crazy amount of clubs and societies in school. And honestly, this allowed me to be really good when it comes to behavioral interviews. So there you have it. Those are my tips when it comes to engineering undergrad and internships. There are a few more videos that I have when it comes to co-ops and internships. One of them is top eight reasons why you will be successful with a co-op or internship. So you can check out this video in the video above and hope you have a blast if you do get that co internship opportunity. I know I had a blast with mine. Hope this video helped and until next time, take care. Bye.